Okay, what we have here is my attempt at laminating a handle. This here is a piece of hickory. It's 15 16 in thickness. As I said in previous videos, we just can't get like a 2x4 or 2 by anything in stock, hickory stock. It'd be nice if we could because then I could make all sorts of different things. But uh, you just can't. This is the fix you got. This is as thick as you can get it actually in this area. I'm sure if I could drive to Houston or one of the local town, big towns, I could probably get some. But I really don't want to be driving almost 100 miles or just to get there. But I think, I'm, I think I've think i come up with a solution. Um, I went to buy this axe head handle because I was, my other idea with the wheelbarrow handle was too, it wasn't wide, quite wide enough. So I thought I'd hit the essential solution with this. Unfortunately, the eye is too small, even on this boy's axe size handle, which is 28 inches. Um, so I got home and I thought, you know what, I'm just going to do what I've been thinking about doing anyway, which is the laminated handle, because this I don't want to be going back. So I don't like buying these handles anyway, because if you look, it has heartwood going through here, which isn't good on an axe handle anyway. So anyway, this is where we're at. I'm going to get this piece of uh, hickory. I'm going to glue a piece of walnut on that side, a piece of walnut on this side. So what you're going to have is the meat of the axe handle itself. It's going to be hickory. So it's, that's where the strength is going to be at. This is going to be for the thickness. And I'm guessing it's going to look like, you know, a bit for show too. It's going to look, it should look good. But I won't know till I get it done. So just bear with me. I'm going to uh, organize all these clamps and God knows what else I'll go over here and put glue everywhere, I guess. I need to get this done tonight though, so I can actually work on the handle tomorrow. I don't see how much of a mess I can make. And I'm sorry for all you carpenters out there. I know I'm probably doing this the wrong way, but I'm not a carpenter, as you can probably tell. But we've all got to do what we've got to do, huh? I am good at making a mess, though. I got stuff, this stuff everywhere. <laughs> These clamps I'm using at the moment. I know the guys in in the UK don't have this store, but these are Harbour Freight um, clamps. I'll tell you what, they for the price you can't beat them. They're like for the smaller ones, these ones, they're like three bucks a piece, and then they're nearly always on sale. So I mean, and they they last pretty good. I've used them for doing the knives and everything. I like them. Well guys, hopefully that's enough, because that really is, that's, that's the end of my um, clamp supply. Uh, oh, no, no I got this one. I got this monster, don't know where it's going to go though, I guess I can hook it on here. Huh? Will that help? I don't know, what do you think? Right, let's let that glue up, sit up. I've made it so I can't wipe any of the glue off, which is real nice for me to do the clean up, oh well. And uh, I'll be back tomorrow. Okay, time to take all the 
clamps off and see what we got. Other than the big giant mess I have to clean up, obviously. Marked up real quick. I'm, gonna use, I'm just going to save this for a template. Okay, looking good so far. I'm liking the, the way it's laminated together. The grain's looking good too, real nice. And those of you who are more observant, did you see what I done? I used this as a template. So why would I use the handle as a template that didn't fit the axe head as a template? This guy here is a dummy, but a lucky dummy because I cut it. Fortunately, I cut it bigger, so because I figured I could always grind it down. Okay, so what we have, the, obviously those belts weren't doing it, they were useless. This is for serious stock removal, you can actually see here. That is, that's right, that's a 24 grit belt. This is like having rocks stuck on the thing, so fingers crossed. Let's see if we can get some stock removal done with this little bad boy. Okay, I'll go ahead and take down this roughness. The other sander I've got kind of digs in a little bit, but it does take the material off real quick. This little palm sander does a very good job of flattening out the flat, flat spots.
Okay, we're going to go ahead and use the palm sander again to take out some of the the scoring and scratches that are made by the actual sander. This being a straight up spin sander. This is what you call a dual action. So actually, it, as it rotates, the thing goes like this too. The base, it makes it so it doesn't scratch. It makes it real good for this because it will glide over the top of any um, scratch marks we have we put with the with the sander. Now that shows a grain. Awesome. Love that look. Right, I'm going to go back to doing a few more sanding coats and bring the grits down. I'm sure you're not really interested in seeing all that. You want to see the finished product, so I'll be back in a second. Okay guys, we are almost there. I'm just going to give this quick once over with some 400 